Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. This is Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. Uh, this is the first lecture of the second week. Mm, we will learn about airworthiness of an aircraft. So, before we go into the topic in detail, for today we will let us see what we have covered so far. We have covered so far. Uh, historical background of aerospace structural analysis, development of aircraft. The first point if we look at first point is basically the history of solid mechanics we have seen and that is what leads the path for analysis of structures. And then in the next lecture we have covered development of aircraft uh, since 17 December 1903 from the Kitty Hawk flight. Uh, till date whatever we have seen and then uh, where how what of aircraft uh, uh, with respect to size and configuration we have seen various sizes from small to big uh, and but we have also observed that from structures point of view there is not much change but but according to configuration we need to we need to have some change in the structural design various types of external loads we have seen, where from the external loads come, how does it come. Uh, the loads are the basic thing which we need to withstand. So, loads will come in our uh, discussion uh, again and again, today also we will discuss about loads. So, uh, that was an introduction to the uh, external loads and we will do more detail about loads conceptual structural detail of a typical aircraft. In this uh, we have uh, seen in articulated fashion what is there inside a wing, what is there inside a fuselage, how does it look like, what are the structural components called and all those things, nomenclatures all those things we have already covered. And in today's lecture what we will do, we will cover the airworthiness, we will cover load factor source of different loads, flight maneuvers and loading conditions. So, uh, flight according to flight maneuver how the loading condition changes that we will see. So, uh, let us have some before we go to the air worthiness, uh, let us see uh, some basic considerations on loads again. If we look at this slide, this slide the load conditions govern the dimensions of a member. That is always true. Uh, under load we generally change the dimension, we need to change the material, we need to because it has to withstand the load, it has to support the load to serve its purpose. External loads encountered while in flight and in ground. In general in aircraft are two types in these are the two conditions in flight and in ground with different types of loads come. In ground towing, hoisting, uh, pulling all those loads come uh, even taxiing all those loads in during flight different maneuver load loads will generally come. So, all those things uh, we, we need to encounter instead of instead of looking for all load condition aircraft components are designed for critical load conditions for each and every structural member. So, this is important critical load condition. See, previously also we have discussed different loading conditions and the picture uh, if we look at this picture, we see that there are different loads indicated and those loads are those loads 
uh, are uh, on which it is uh, designed the aircraft and which uh, uh, for those loads which section is more vulnerable that is indicated there. But uh, here uh, the critical load condition that we need to find out and uh, those critical load conditions are specified by licensing agencies. Licensing agencies means there are agencies who certifies the design, who certifies the fabrication, who certifies the flight testing. So, these licensing agencies uh, certifies everything then only it is, uh, it is allowed to fly that is the reason flight is so safe than any other journey. So, depending on the past investigation and experience. So, the licensing agencies improve their experience, their critical conditions, load conditions and accordingly we, we continue for design. So, let us come back to the topic of airworthiness where from it comes. Uh, if we look at the a discussion here, a kind of definition, the airworthiness of an aircraft is concerned with the standards of safety incorporated in all aspects of its construction. It is concerned about the safety incorporation while it is being constructed, while it is being designed in all cases. This range from structural strength to the provision of certain safeguards in the event of crash landing and include design requirements relating the aerodynamics performance and electrical and hydraulic systems. So, it looks into everything, it looks into overall design of aircraft in with respect to aerodynamics, with respect to electrical and hydraulic design every aspect, but from our point of view we will be considering, we will be looking into the airworthiness requirements uh, in our structural point of view. A brief uh, is all given here in a diagram form. We define that capability of an aircraft to perform sat satisfactorily. So, airworthiness actually looks into the safety capability of an aircraft to perform satisfactorily. With safety, how does it perform satisfactorily? That is the, uh, that is the aim of airworthiness criteria. To, to, fulfill mission, to fulfill mission requirements, every, every flight has a mission requirement in civil uh, aviation is a, has a mission requirement to, to carry passengers from a one airport to the other. Like that mission requirements varies, uh, recent days we see, see lot of uh, jungle fires or forest fires are coming up for that there are specific aircrafts to, to fight those. So, that requirement of that particular mission is to, to fight against the fire. Like that there are agricultural aircrafts, the agricultural aircrafts mission is in general is to spray required amount of um, maybe pesticide, maybe nutrients to the field like that depending on the mission uh, it has different type of requirements or say a fighter aircraft uh, has a different uh, type of requirement. So, all those requirements uh, depending on the requirements generally air ordinance criteria criteria come and accordingly it has to be satisfied. Throughout the specified life, this is another uh, important thing. It is not only to satisfy the requirement, whether it is able to satisfy it throughout the life that is also important. So, it tries to ensure that it, it needs to be tested after certain flight hour. All those requirements are specified in this uh, safety guideline. In a defense envelope, defined envelope, so that is what, uh, what we uh, we were discussing uh, this defined envelope. Envelope, uh, some of you probably have some idea what is envelope, flight envelope. Uh, but if you do not have any um, idea of flight envelope, means how much force, how long it can fly, all those things are defined in a flight envelope. Whether how much g load it can sustain, how much angle of attack it can sustain, all those things are defined by this flight envelope whether how much roll or uh, pitching, pitching rate it can achieve all those things are defined here. 
with acceptable level of safety and reliability. So, this the gov governing uh, with respect to these points, the AR ordinance defines the criteria and we need to follow it. So, for structural point of view, let us see how these things come into our consideration. AR ordinance requirement in case of structures. Handbook of official requirements with mention of minimum standards of safety, standards of safety incorporated in all aspects of its construction, structural strength safeguards in case of crash landing, design requirements relating to the aerodynamic performance, electrical and hydraulic systems, limit load. So, this is something new we have not dis discussed. Limit load is the maximum load that the aircraft is expected to experience in normal operation. Proof load is the product of the limit load and the proof factor which generally ranges in between 1 to 1.25 and ultimate load is the product of the limit load and the ultimate factor that is usually 1.5. So, generally we find out depending on the flight envelope, uh, depending on the performance, uh, we find out the limit load and then with respect to whatever we need to find out proof load or the limit load, we generally find it out and accordingly we do. Uh, so this the aircraft structure must withstand the proof load without detrimental distortion and should not fail until the ultimate load has been achieved. And this is where the proof load comes in. United Kingdom has a different guideline for air readiness that is AP 970 for military and BCAR for civil aircrafts. USA has its own guideline that is FAR for civil and MIL for military aircraft. Like that almost all countries have their own guidelines. These two countries come first because they initiated it first. So, if we so air ordinance agencies are there in all countries. Uh, here is a small list of air ordinance agencies in USA, in UK already we have uh, said uh, and uh, who, which organizations uh, acts to implement those those um, regulations are listed listed on the right hand side table right hand side column so well, in case of usa federal aviation requirements or federal aviation agency washington is the responsible agency for the civil aircraft and department of defense and military specific for military specification specification sorry for in UK civil aviation authorities CAA in 1972 became air registration board uses British civil aviation regulation MOD pre procurement executive DEF STAN 00970 is the military aircraft organization. Like that similarly we have different organization for France, we have different organization for Germany, we have different organizations for Russia. Like that we have different organizations in India also. Uh, aircraft Act 1934 Director General of Civil Aviation more popularly known as DGCA is the agency which governs everything. If you are aware of, if of the recent development, DGCA has come out with some regulation with respect to the small UAVs. Like that, they time to time, time to time improve their guidelines, they revise their guidelines and design requirements, implement those regulations. Like that for military aircraft, design approvals 
SEMILAC is the organization quality and assurance DG AQA is the organization for design approval uh, the SEMILAC is the organization who approves the design like the LCA aircraft light combat aircraft or the ALH advanced light helicopter what uh, we have already developed our country have already developed. Uh, so, in, in that case the SEMILAC is the organization who approves the design and for quality and other DGA QA is the organization who takes care of this. So, uh, okay, we are more to the requirement with respect to the structures. So, with respect to the structures as we have seen where from the load comes, how those loads come, loads come to the aircraft, uh, those are some of the important points while we think of uh, designing an aircraft, we need to think where from it may come. So, that is the reason mm -hmm. this table groups different sources uh, of aircraft load. So, if we look at uh, the sources first is the air load, then during landing, uh, then other loads are definitely will come, uh, other loads include uh, other loads category, inertia load category, takeoff, taxiing, power plant. So, let us start with the air load, maneuver, maneuver is the certain type of movement of aircraft due to which what are the types of load comes, uh, it may come to mind if to move what are the load structure may experience. Actually for different change of acceleration, different uh, type of loads, inertia loads comes to aircraft and that becomes a predominant criteria for design. During gust or the sudden change of wind velocity and direction that creates a sudden again finally, it, it gives the change of acceleration and that creates, creates inertia load. Not only that it sometimes it, it leads to the sudden loss of lift and if, if, if it losses the lift suddenly it acts like an impact to the total aircraft. Control deflection for maneuvering for certain direction change, we always need to have a control deflection and that control deflection induces load and uh, that load we need to take care. Component interaction, different components interact. Uh, this is a very, very interesting criteria. We, we, we say different components interact means it is, it is uh, difficult with the understanding you have to describe now. now. Component in interaction may be the highest example, we may say the uh, fluttering or maybe interaction between a, a controls, two different control surfaces. Now, we go to the buffeting, buffeting is a certain type of aerodynamic phenomena due to, due to which a periodic oscillation comes and uh, that is experienced generally by the tail plane and that has to be taken care. During landing vertical load factor, we will, will work out on this thing in our ex in some example later on. Uh, spin up, if it spins up uh, that means after touching down if it spins up, uh, sorry the, it is not that, it is the spin up of the wheel. Uh, spinning back, it is also related to the spinning back of the wheel that it produces inertia. Crabbed landing, this is very, very important thing. There are in many videos available in internet, you, you may look at it. Crabbed landing is very, very interesting and uh, really, um, really a, a beautiful example of how the control system has developed uh, in case of aircraft control. So, while an aircraft lands with in angular fashion in an airport, so that is that is what the crab landing is and then a one wheel sometimes uh, during crab landing or some other condition also one wheel can touches down and that creates huge impact that has to be 
taken care. Arrested landing and breaking, these are two special cases. Arrested landing is that uh, in case of um, aircraft carrier uh, landing, they are uh, arresting hooks are there and that arrests the landing. We will solve example with respect to this. Uh, other landing uh, loads uh, coming from the towing, we need to tow an aircraft, we need to jack an aircraft, uh, pressurization, uh, the fuselage is pressurized, bird strike, this is a very, very bad unwanted in incidents, but we need to take care of it. Unfortunately, bird strikes and we, we need to have a safe design for that. Actuation of different uh, control surfaces and uh, crash, which is not at all a desired condition, but we need to have some kind of safety for crash. So, inertia loads due to acceleration as I told you all these maneuvers also finally, goes to the acceleration change of acceleration, uh, but, but this is a inertia loads talks about a regular acceleration of the aircraft rotation, a regular rotation dynamics load because of the various other dynamics criteria involved in during flight, vibration and flutter all these things in uh, introduces the inertia loads and that those loads we need to talk about. During takeoff, catapult takeoff like the arrested landing in carriers, aircraft carriers we need to have a catapult takeoff system and that catapult uh, is catapult is generally attached to some uh, fuselage junction. So, those those has to be designed properly. Aborted takeoff, if it is for some reason aborted, what are the forces come and when it is getting aborted, all those things we need to take care. Bumps and turning, these are as I told you uh, during taxiing, the aircraft is full of fuel, uh, even a small bump creates a huge load on the wing fuselage junction power plant uh, from there only the total thrust comes and that gets transferred to the wing and to the total aircraft. Uh, for partial failure, it creates a huge torque to the total system. It also creates gyroscopic effect because of its rotation, vibration due to its own uh, source of vibration. Duct pressure is another source of uh, loads we from the power plant we need to talk, take care. Okay, this is a, a kind of repetition slide from the previous one, this slide um, let us skip. So, this is very, very important slide, this, this phenomena is, is very, very important as I was discussing uh, that the flight envelope will learn, the flight envelope is the important thing. So, uh, what is flight envelope? In one sense, this is flight envelope. What is this is? Let us try to learn. This is a plot of n, the load factor, the load factor with respect to the v. Various loading conditions for an airplane are usually represented on a graph of a limit load factor n plotted against the indicated airspeed v. This diagram is often called v n diagram or a flight envelope or a v n di diagram, v g diagram sorry. Since the load factor n is related to the acceleration of gravity g, it, it justifies this. Now, let us see how this diagram is developed and uh, why do we need to have this diagram for different type of aircraft, this flight and envelope is fixed. Say for a civil aviation generally this uh, n values maximum values are fixed, n minimum values are fixed and V max is also fixed. So, all these things are fixed. So, these things are generally this part of the uh, plot is generally found out, found out from the high positive high angle of attack 
and uh, this portion low positive low angle of attack from from here to here and whenever there the limit of speed uh, air speed comes there it comes su suddenly down we should not cross that and that crossing may may lead to some other failure other problems different values of n and this portion is generally governed by the negative low angle of attack and this is again uh, this this actually this total portion is not very intentional portion for a certain desired maneuver this portion is generally uh, encountered by negative low angle of attack negative high angle of attack so this these two portions are generally during the stall it happens and uh, it is generally kept as the value 1.25 times the general value obtained for n and in case of negative we generally do not compromise we do not keep the margin that of 0.25. So, let us see how do we do considering situation in which a maneuver is undertaken such as such that the angle of incidence is increased to a value corresponding to the maximum lift coefficient that is C L max that can be obtained. The lift force will be, so this is uh, a formula we need to memorize now, lift force is half rho v square C L max and S. What is rho? Rho is the density of air, V is the velocity of aircraft here it is uh, mixed uh, actually this is air speed. So, uh, this is the air speed and then C L max is the maximum lift coefficient and S, S is the surface area of wing. <coughs> so, in in is this is the uh, definition of n if we say n is equals to lift by w. So, if lift is this whatever we have said this becomes something w comes in the denominator. So, that is what is uh, given here you see only in instead of C L max here it has been said as C z max. Uh, that actually is the component which is considered for in determination not the lift in the direction of z what is the coefficient lift in the direction upward what is the coefficient that and 1.25 that. So, this is the highest point curve it should be maintained that means it is having a high angle of attack slowly while it is increasing the velocity the, the n value increases and uh, there is a limit up to which it can increase mm, this this portion is called the stall portion and this this is positive stall and this is the negative stall portion typical values of uh, limit load factors uh, these are some from the guidelines available so for general aviation uh, normally it is 2.5 to 3.8 uh, for n negative is minus 1 to minus 1.5 for general aviation utility aircraft it is little bit more n positive that is 4.4 general aviation aerobatic it is 6 it needs to go for a different type of maneuver and that maneuver and that uh, maneuver needs a high g high g requirement and we need to follow that and negative also it re does because sometimes for aerobatic reasons it flies even inverted so home built aircrafts are generally allowed up to 5g and in negative minus 2g for transport aircraft it is 3 to 4g and minus 1 to minus 2 g strategic bombers that is 3 is the general limit minus 1 like that for tactical bomber bomb, bomber we have some limits for fighter aircrafts this is also very high 
like the aerobatic aircrafts because it, it needs to go through different type of maneuvers, critical maneuvers to fight. The limit loads used by civil used by civil agencies are applied loads used by military agencies are the maximum anticipated loads in the entire service lifespan of the vehicle. The ultimate loads commonly referred to the design loads referred to as the design loads are the limit load multiplied by a factor of safety. As an example for a military aircraft limit loads on the wing occurs during a 8G maneuver with factor of 1.5 design load, 1.5 of the design load for aircraft wing. becomes. 12 g. So, so, for an military aircraft 8 g becomes 12 g with a factor of safety 1.5. For missile structure the factor of safety is 1.25, for other aircraft structure the factor of safety is 1.5. So, limit load and ultimate loads are two loads which we need to find out limit load is the load experienced and ultimate load is with factor of safety what we use for design. Okay. So, this is uh, some typical conditions at different angle of attack for design purpose uh, what we have seen in the flight envelope. So, if we look at the positive high angle of attack uh, condition, it is obtained in a pull out at the highest possible angle of attack on the wing. The positive high angle of attack condition will be critical for compressive stresses in the upper forward region of the wing, upper forward region of the wing. across section and for tensile stresses in the lower lower aft region of the wing that is this portion. Now, if we understand try to understand one others also will be much easier. If we if we try to high angle of attack as I told you it happens uh, in general during positive stall. So, if we look at an to an aircraft with a line diagram, if we say this is starboard and this is port side and if we look at this section as this section at the tip, what is happening for positive high angle of attack? For positive high angle of attack, actually the airfall is something like this. Not only this because of positive high angle of attack if we uh, look at this if this is the fuselage and if this is the wing it deflects like this. So, what is happening at root? This portion definitely the top portion is definitely under compression 
and the bottom portion is definitely under tension because it is deflecting this way. Now, it says that highest possible angle of attack on the, the positive high angle of attack condition will be critical for compressive stresses in the upper forward region. Why it is saying the upper forward region will be most critical? Because, because with respect to the fuselage, this, this angle is not uh, same throughout the uh, along the wing. So, because of that there always will be some, some moment acting this way and that will increase the compression on this region more in comparison to this region. And similarly, since it is deflecting in this manner that will equally increase the tension in this region. That is the reason it says for positive high angle of attack condition it is obtained in a this is why when do we get in case of pull out maneuver we get it. The highest possible angle of attack on the wing in the upper forward section the positive high angle of attack condition will be critical for compressive stresses in upper forward region of the wing across section and for tensile stresses in the lower aft region of the wing across section. So, accordingly as we have just now discussed because of this two three dimensional phenomena uh, the port side trailing tip if we look at it will deflect something like this this way and we will have to Will, we can easily understand why compression is more important in this region, why the maximum tension is more important in this region. So, let us uh, go further for other conditions and cases. So, this is another positive low angle of attack during generally cruise condition it happens. The wing, the wing has the smallest possible angle of attack at which lift corresponding to the limit load factor may be developed. The wing bending moment in this condition produce the maximum compressive stress on the upper rear flange and adjacent stringer and maximum tensile stress on the lower front spar flanges and adjacent stringers. So, this time the most important portion sections are this for compression and this for tension. See the it is it is similar, but since the it is not high angle of attack that is the reason uh, this section does not remain so important whereas, this section becomes more important for design. So, similarly the but the phenomena remains almost same only thing it may happen that what we have seen since it is low angle of attack probably the angle of attack we observed may be something like this and this will definitely not produce much load on this region whereas, it will produce much load compressive load in this region. Similar manner we may see other two important conditions that is negative high angle of attack condition it occurs in intentional flight maneuvers as I was discussing in which the air loads on the wing are down or when the airplane strikes sudden downdraft while on flight. The wing bending moment in the negative high angle of attack condition produce the highest compressive stresses in the lower forward region of the wing cross section and 
the highest tensile stresses in the upper aft region of the wing cross section. So, similar way if we consider this as the port side tip of the wing what will happen? It will happen that it, there will be a huge moment like this and it will be something like this. So, similar way we can see that in case of the last possible case that is negative low angle of attack uh, these are the two regions tension are important this region this and these are important. Uh, it occurs at the diving speed limit of the airplane this condition may occur in an international sorry international maneuver producing a negative load factor or in a negative gust condition. The compressive bending stresses have a maximum value in the lower aft region of the wing cross section and the tensile bending stresses have a maximum value in the upper forward region of the wing cross sections. So, with respect to the flight maneuver and uh, different condition with respect to the load factor uh, flight envelope we now have a, a certain idea how which section uh, the critical condition occurs and we need to continue our design procedure or fixing dimensions of different sections to withstand the load we do. References are standard it is always a mixed uh, not that always all the books are uh, put into, but uh, many times more than one books are uh, consulted and prepared the notice prepared. Following that if we go to the conclusion slide from this uh, uh, lecture today what we have done the typical loading condition governing design of aircraft parts. Uh, we have learned what is airworthiness we have got some fair idea about it, what is load factor, sources of different loads, flight maneuvers and loading conditions, how in case of different flight maneuvers different loading conditions appear. And with uh, that let me conclude today's lecture, this lecture. Thank you, we will meet again with our next lecture.